Uh, yes, uh, I have called uh, my presentation results from the three years monitoring of vegetation phenology and sun induced fluorescence in other town Svalbard. And it's me and uh, Leonard Nielsen also, uh, also does, um, have contributed to this presentation. And um, uh, a lot of guys in addition to that too. So uh, uh, next is, the, this is uh, actually part of the, what, what we call OSMO-VEN, is an automatic system for monitoring and mapping vegetation and environmental season changes on Svalbard. And uh, we have, uh, first we had uh, funding from Research Council of Norway. Uh, now we have SIOS funding until 2027. And uh, the, the first instrument is uh, number 44. It's more uh, uh, um, near uh, actually remote sensing system standing out in uh, Odenton on uh, 10 racks sites. And, uh, but I, I will concentrate my presentation here about the instrument number 49, which is a, uh, a field spectrometer that survey the monitored vegetation uh, during the growing season and has been uh, uh, standing there for three years now. And uh, what we, uh, this is a very uh, high resolution field spectrometer designed for high resolution spectral measurements of radiances and for sun induced fluorescence. And uh, the sun induced fluorescence represents a di direct proxy for photosynthesis and ecosystem carbon groups. Hence, in a new global proxy for cross uh, world's uh, primary production. And uh, this uh, is, uh, instrument is set up within the footprint of the already established Eddy Covariance Tower in Odenton, run by uh, University of Lund in Sweden. And this uh, also acts as a calibration point for the instrument number. Um, and uh, here you see the uh, a view graph, uh, and uh, actually uh, it's uh, uh, established on the river bank of, of the Odent River, Odent Elva in, in Odent uh, the, This instrument uh, and uh, in this footprint of the Eddy covariance tower. And this is on the uh, uh, view graph showing the, the uh, racks from the instrument 44. And here is the, actually the location of the flux spectrometer nearby the eddy covariance and uh, the small image on the right side, you see the eddy covariance tower in some Few uh, meters from the, this site, and uh, this was this uh, instrument was established in 2019, and the vegetation is uh, dominated by a grassy vegetation, the grass, the poncia fishery, and uh, some uh, also graminate erythorum sculpture. Uh, which is uh, more subdominant. So it's a grassy vegetation on the river bank or on the table. And uh, I already uh, talked about uh, sun induced fluorescence. And um, actually, the SIF measurements acquired by the flux system on the ground. Is, is a very good proxy for uh, for um, 
measurements on the ground uh, and uh, and uh, and also an important source for uh, calibration sites for satellite satellite based system and uh, we have uh, got some uh, sensor systems that we will uh, use in the, in the future and this this is the orbiting um, uh, carbon uh, uh, system, which is called also two, and um, actually what we uh, do with the SIF measurements, we uh, extract uh, SIF measurements in uh, a wavelength of seven hundred and sixteen nanometer, and uh, six and 187 nanometer. It's in the red, it's the red SIF and the near infrared SIF is the 769 nanometer. And, uh, and the, 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 this is the, actually the clock specification. It's uh, consisting of one very fine resolution spectrometer, six, with a wavelength range of 650 to 800 nanometer, and a more coarse resolution spectrometer with a wavelength range of 400 to 950 nanometer. And that's uh, the best uh, spectral resolutions about is uh, 0.3 nanometer for the high resolution spectrometer. Yes, and uh, uh, we have also uh, the, the, actually the producer of the spectrometer down in Germany. They have uh, produced a data data processing uh, software that is used for processing analysis and extraction of different parameters. And I think you have to add the R software in order to, to uh, actually run this uh, uh, software. And uh, this is an ex example of the daily measurements of radiances from the clock system. This is from 27th of July, 2020. And you see uh, the, the actually this is uh, the, the formation of the, from the 400 to the 900 uh, nanometer wavelength of the, of the, the more coarse resolution spectrometer. And I will give you some, uh, some um, examples here. We have examples for three years uh, monitoring. We have uh, um, extracted the NDVI, this normalized differential vegetation index. And uh, together with the uh, MERS terrestrial chlorophyll index, MTCI, which is uh, actually close to this uh, 760 nanometer resolution, which uh, is uh, you can extract the uh, sun induced fluorescence directly from. And um, you see the formula, and uh, I think it was Dash and Curran that uh, launched this uh, terrestrial chlorophyll index for, for the first time in 2004. And uh, and uh, they uh, used uh, actually Vietnam and the, all, uh, the, the large areas that was actually, uh, they used uh, this ancient orange in order to, to um, uh, try to get rid of the forests in the warfare during the 60s and ending up in the 70s. 
And uh, you see that uh, uh, the year 2020 has uh, significant better uh, measure, uh, uh, indices, so NDVI, and TCI, AVI, and the red edge position. And, uh, and also the red edge position is uh, also in the in index that uh, actually uh, show you the content of the curriculum at the this, at this, this time. So if you have a repo uh, higher values, then you have more chlorophyll in the vegetation or in the plant in survey. And uh, this uh, is uh, also other indices or uh, we can extract from the spectrometer, for instance, uh, the near vegetation, which is uh, now uh, actually a new coming uh, vegetation index that is a better uh, vegetation index than the NDVI to follow the, um, the together with SIF, uh, the, the development and uh, cross primary production uh, on the surface. And uh, you see that a lot of variation in the red sift and also far red sift during the course of the growing season and, uh, and uh, also the differences between the years. And uh, as I said before, 2020 was a very good year. And uh, we also compare the mean air temperature and snow depth from the elemental with the uh, Mary's uh, terrestrial curriculum index. And you see um, there is uh, a much better uh, 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 measurements or um, results for the MTCI. Uh, which is also correlates uh, with the, much with the mean air temperature, but also with the, with the uh, number of growing days. And uh, so far we have uh, actually launched one publication on the instrument 44. We are working with this instrument with a new uh, new uh, uh, publication in preparation for this uh, instrument 44. And uh, I have also, uh, yesterday I was more or less finished with the preparation of, of the following uh, science data uh, uh, publication for the hyperspectral flux sensor. Also. In, for the instrument 49. Uh, so we have prepared this, uh, this um, um, publication, but we are waiting for uh, actually uh, a slot to, to get uh, transfer them, actually the, the data to the, to the Arctic data center in order to uh, because uh, one of the uh, rules in this uh, Earth System Science Data Journal is that it should be open for uh, the whole uh, research society to, uh, to uh, actually use the data. The next step is uh, to compare the, the sending used for sense data and the other indices I have shown you here uh, with the results from the, or the monitoring data from the medical variance um, tower and, uh, on the, and uh, compare it with, um, with the long 
time series that uh, Birk and et al. has uh, actually accomplished. And also to uh, compare it with uh, satellite data like the movies, but also the uh, orbiting uh, carbon observatory from NASA. And the new coming in map satellite, German map satellite, which is a uh, spectrometer satellite. So that was what I had.